let's look at a more architectural uh, exercise now to regard lofting. What I've got here is a is a very crude landscape model of a plateau, a valley, and another short, smaller plateau on this side. If I twist this round, you can see that the bridge that I'm creating here actually dips down. It's not, you know, a purely symmetrical bridge. Okay, so I've got. What I'll do is I'll show you the uh, the finished object, so you can see where we're where we're heading first. So I'll open another file. And there's the finished version. It's shaded already, so I'll just twist over. And we can look at the bridge. Okay, it's a reasonably elegant bridge. Uh, just colliding with the landscape. That's no problem because it's out of sight. There's a handrail on the bridge that's made up of uh, solids, all vertical. So we were, we were sending those along a line along the bridge, and they're all staying vertical using the measure command to do that. I've got a view saved in this drawing. If I escape from orbit and then use the view command, which is just the letter V. In the model views, I have P1, set current, apply, and this is us just nestled under the edge of the bridge. And this is to show you how the how the profile is changing. Now, this is something you you could build from concrete; it would be feasible. But you can see that the the profile is is st steeper at the ends than it is in the middle. It's quite sh it's quite shallow in the middle, but steeper at the ends. And that's modeling method of lofting would would be able to create that. Okay, have another look at the bridge. Okay, so it's fairly elegant. It's it's the handrail has been lifted from the the Sackler crossing that's that's in Kew Gardens. So uh, a bit of homage there to that bridge. Okay, let's close the the finished job and look at the way we make that bridge. So the pink shapes here, these are cross sections uh, and one, two, sorry, two, th the second one, the third one, and the fourth one here, these are all uh, true to the radius of this curve. If I took radials out they would pass through these these shapes. I'm going to uh, restore the the, the left UCS and you'll be able to see that. If I look at the side of the bridge you'll be able to see that those sections are, are tilted and they are true heading towards the center of the of this arc. So the center point of that arc sets them out. Two at the end don't they're just basically because they're basically kind of colliding with the landscape. Okay so I'll twist it round and let's do the fun bit first. Let's extrude the bridge so we'll use a loft to get this tricky shape. Pick these sections. Okay, it's all this time it's automatically joining these with a with a smooth fit, which is fine. If it wasn't, then we would press return, go for the settings, or use this device to make sure it does a smooth fit. It seems to decide itself which one it wants to do sometimes. Maybe it's based on the shapes perhaps. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'll then extrude this last section to hit the main one. And we can join those together with the union command. It just means less parts to get lost. Okay, so that's the, the first part of the bridge. And to get that over to this side, I need to mirror it in the left UCS. I can't do it from the top because it would actually come down and then back up. That wouldn't be right. So if I restore the plan view and then use the mirror command, pick the object, return, and I can pick any point in this particular 
direction. So one, two, return. Then join those two together, may as well make it easier. Sometimes when you join solids you don't necessarily lose the line between them. It's still one object, but there's kind of traces of, of line between. There's no gap, there's just a, a kind of a history of the join. Right, we've got a road surface and a, uh, a footpath surface to put on here. And these are just extrusions and I've got a polyline running along the edge here which we can use to extrude as a path. So ext return, whoops, start that again, ext return, pick the road surface, return, we want to use a path to follow, and we'll use this line. That's whizzed right to the far end of the bridge. Do the same again, picking this item, which will represent a footpath, and the edge of the bridge, using a path again, is out. Now, probably best to put these onto some layers that we can control. So I have a layer for the bridge surface and I have a layer for the footpath. The colors of these don't seem to have they all seem to be the same so let's just change the color of the, sorry, the bridge surface layer. Let's make that gray. path I'll make a kind of a yellowy gold which path oh, 41 will do that's fine okay so bridge is kind of there half of it anyway uh, what we'll do now is put the UCS back to normal and here's just one of the posts that I want to use for the handrail okay there is no actual top rail it's just uprights to make the the barrier it's quite an elegant way of doing it this at the moment is just a simple solid but to use it on the measure command I need to give it a name so I need to turn it into a block and the command for that is just the letter B and return and let's call this BAL1 for baluster I need to pick a point to control it and that would be the middle of that pink line. Okay, it's the middle of the bottom of the post. Then I select the objects, which is just the brown post, not the not the pink line. Okay, so there's a plan view there of the of the object. Everything's fine there. Click OK. Right. Now we nip over to this line and we use the measure command. It shortens to ME. Pick the polyline. We want to spread a block along this line. So type in the letter B and return. And the name of the block, we just recreated it just a second ago, is BAL1. This time we don't want to align it with the block. If we do, the gap at the bottom of the between two posts will be big smaller than the gap at the top. And it would look a bit strange. Uh, so we enter the letter N there for no. And the length of the segment, this is you determining the centers for the for the spread of the object. So if we wanted a, a 100 millimeter gap, we would have 100 millimeters plus the thickness of one of the objects. So that would be 150. So if we wanted a 150 millimeter gap, which actually breaks regulations, then we'd need to choose a segment length of 200. So let's go for 200 and be naughty. That's it, spread the object right along the bridge, keeping them all vertical though. They're all in the same orientation as they were when we first created the object. This last one can go at the end of the bridge there, delete the line, and then I can mirror the bridge from the top view. So I look down on the bridge. Use the mirror command, which is MI, return. Grab the bridge from this side. Press return. I 
can use any base points along here, there's a th hundreds to choose from. Don't lose the source object, so we press return there, and that's the bridge complete.